So we're going to make a folder called Parallax Backgrounds. This is one of the most powerful techniques for doing animated parallax, even live action parallax with uh, layers. If you're using like Blender or something, this this method is extremely powerful and it saves a lot of time versus doing this by hand manually. So I'm going to drag this in. All right, so the first thing we're going to do is we're going to build the background. All right, so what we need is layer one. Let me see layer one. We're going to do this in a 1920 by 1080. So I'm going to make that a comp and we're going to call this parallax. The hardest part of this whole process is going to be building this fucking background. So I'm just going to grab all of these 1920s and I'm going to some pop them in here. All right, they're not going to be in order because this is the way we dragged them in. So we're just going to order them. Luckily, these were named very well. And now the next thing we're going to do is we're going to highlight them all. And then we're going to click on 2D camera. That's it. Literally, this is all, this is like the, the hardest part. Click on 2D camera. And now the camera is, the camera is being built. And then we're now going to animate this. I'm going to show you exactly how this works. So you can track left and right. So this is what it looks like when you track left and right. And you might be wondering like, oh no, it's not completed. No worries there. We're going to create motion tile. Now, if you don't want long render times, don't make this more than 300 pixels or you're not going to be able to render anything. You're going to be mad. I would make it like 200, then I wouldn't worry about it. I'm going to do mirror edges. And so this is what it's going to look like when you do this. When you move this around, so you see how when I move it, now it's repeating. And if you wanted to like do more, we can increase it to 300 and I'll just duplicate it even more. And the next thing we're going to do is do the next one. So this is the trees. I would literally just copy and paste this effect on the trees. I would probably even say scaling this would make more sense. So like scaling it like this and then taking away the mirror. Well, I guess, I guess it's fine. I think scaling it is fine. All right, so let's get out of that. So now let's look at what this does. So now you're going to get to see, see this parallax happening. So if I make, if I go in here, click the stopwatch, hit U, and then track it like this, watch what happens. See that parallax? I would even make it longer, to be honest. Like make it like this. So that you notice that I'm using linear keyframes, but it slowed down by itself. This is new for Duick Angela. Duick Basil did not do this. Um, so now you have automatic ease ins and ease outs with the cameras. It's, it's, it's amazing. This is like really amazing stuff. Now it is a fixed camera. Um, what this really means is just that um, the camera is static. There's no like crazy movement. Um, and then you, or basically it's a linear camera movement. You can do handheld. So this is going to give it more of a shaky camera. So I can show you that really quick. So it's like more like this. It's really shaky. Um, you really want to keep that in mind if you want to use that. Then you can do a shoulder camera. So that's kind of still shaky, but not as shaky. And then you can do a tripod. Tripod is going to be very uh, normal. It's probably more so like a fixed camera. It's probably the same thing, to be honest. Then you have a steady cam. And steady cam is still going to have a little bit of shakiness, but it's probably my favorite. If I'm going to have any like natural movement, I'll probably go with a steady cam. Um, we'll go back to fix. Then you have this. You have the start, then stop movement. That's what you're seeing why it's slowing down. But if you do a start of movement, I'm going to show you what that looks like. So start of movement. Start of movement looks like this. It starts really slow and then it starts to pick up and then it stops. And then you have end of movement. This is the exact opposite. It goes really fast and then it slows down. And then you'll notice it never stops. <laughs> If I had this longer, like, uh, hang on, Control K, we're gonna make, we're gonna increase the, uh, the keyframes. 
Let's go with 30 seconds. Now watch what happens. This is end of movement. You There'll be times you're going to want to use this. So it's like it starts fast, it slows down, but then it never stops. It just keeps going. So it would have kept going if I had this all set up like this. Really move all this here. And I, keep in mind, we're not changing the keyframes. So it just keeps going forever. You see, it's like this very slow movement. So if you want that kind of slow movement to continue, this is why you would use that. It's very niche reasons, but it is, that's how it works, if you ever wonder. Then you got the easy bezel interpolation. So you can see what this does. So it's like an easy ease, pretty much. It's the most common one. This is what it would have looked like if we had that. Oops, not that. If we had uh, easy ease set up on the keyframe, that's basically the same thing. But you don't need to put the easy ease in there anymore. You can just use this. Um, again, I still think the start then stop movement is, I like it a lot better. But I will use easy bezier at some point. And then this one says use no keyframe interpolation. That means you, if you use this, you're going to want to do all your own interpolations using the graph editor. So that's how these uh, the camera works. The next thing I want to go over um, is the pedestal up and down. So we'll make a keyframe for this. I'm going to hit the U key. And lucky you, you guys are getting to see this firsthand. We're going to go up in the air, or we're going to go down like this. We're going to drop it down. So this is what it will look like when we play with the uh, the vertical axis. This is what happens. What I really would want to do is make this more dramatic. So I would want to make it go all the way up like this. And then that we're going to increase the height to 300 so that way you can see more of the ground and that way it goes up just like this so play this again yeah if you need the motion to start faster you don't want to use this one you'd probably want to use the easy bezier bezier just like that because that's more of an easy ease ease in ease out situation all right so that's the pedestal up and down now the cool thing with this, I need, the the Duick Basil didn't have like this feature as strong as this Duick Angela, is that you can dolly in and out. Normally I would have to use a 3D camera for this. Well, not anymore. You can do um basically everything you want with this 2D camera. This thing is like extremely powerful. So when you dolly in, you're zooming in, but it's a parallax zoom in. You see how see what's happening here. So you're zooming in like this. So what's going to happen is if we go back to here, now if we pull in, you're going to see now we're zooming in. And you know, unfortunately, you'll see these, you see the mountains kind of like where it cuts off. If I go into the mountains, we can actually now go and put 300 on the mountains. I mean, we're kind of pushing it. Being higher than 300 is kind of insane. I, I just wouldn't do it. We're going to try this. I'm going to turn off this and then we're going to try going down and see what happens. And then it should unfold. And if you go into your uh, tools and then go to composition, if you use the mask, I could turn this into a comp. So let's say a pre comp it because this is what you have to do this first. I'm just going to name it mountains. And then if I take and make a mask, so let's go like this and make sure that the mask lines up perfectly. So about right, right there. And then click on crop pre-compositions. And now if you click on it, it's now, this is the crop composition. And if you hit down, Yep, it's working. You can see the tip right there. So now we just need to unfold. And now we have it. A little tricky. So when you have a pre-comp, 
And keep in mind, this is not comp as in the main comp. This is comps within comps. So when you go into this comp, you highlight it and you click on comp settings. This will only change the settings of this comp that's highlighted. It won't change the entire setting. So if you need to change the height, the pixels, the frame rate, the duration, resolution, shy layers, proxies, all this can only be changed for this one comp. So that's how you do all that. If you need to change something inside of a comp. So we're gonna zoom in, we're dialing it in, and there you go, pretty smooth. All right, let's look at the other features. Uh, this is a pan left and right. So if you pan, the difference between tracking left and, and panning left, if you pan left, it's not gonna have any parallax. And if you pan, if you track left, you'll see a parallax. And then you have a tilt up and down. The tilt is a little bit different. So when you tilt up, it kind of, it's like you're tilting the camera. It's not the same as when you pedestal down. So this is the tilt. And this is the this is the pedestal down. More parallax when you tilt. So just think of it like this: the pan and the tilt, no parallax. The track and the pedestal, definitely parallax. Um, and then the dolly is definitely parallax. So that gives you that 3D vibe like this. You can do rolls. So these are really cool for like those type of cinematic uh, situations where things are being kind of tilt on its head. And then of course the zoom in and zoom out is no parallax. So that's, and if you wanna use advanced options, that's here too, but you gotta check this box to actually use it. If you need something to happen sooner, faster, that's where the velocity comes in and you can click on in and out velocity to make that happen. But yeah, that's pretty much the 2D camera.